Ben Gertzel here. I'm going to talk to you today about a book called Weak Links by Peter Simelli. Weak Links, Stabilizers of Complex Systems from Proteins to Social Networks. And this is one of these books that had a, a major effect on me because of the, the breadth of applicability of the, the concepts that, that it presents. I mean, if you're looking at you know, a network-based approach to AI, like OpenCog or OpenCog Hyperon, a complex multi-agent network running on a blockchain like Singularity Net, the network of biological actors within within the human body, the social networks that we all in, interact with all day. All of these are complex networks to which the ideas in, in this book apply. The core idea of the book is that the weak links in the network have a very powerful stabilizing and regulatory function. So if you have two elements in a network that could be connected very strongly, so that something that happens in this element will likely majorly impact the other element, they could be almost totally disconnected. So what happens with this guy doesn't tell you anything about that guy, or they can be weakly connected. So something that happens with this guy has a bit of an effect on that guy, but not 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 really a major one. And the, the point made in the book is that in many, many contexts, it's following the weak links that really makes the network, really makes the network function. So a very simple social network example, I'll dig into more complex social network examples a little later. They talk about uh, job seeking. I mean, it, it's well known that in a whole bunch of white collar professions, I mean, and, and others, most jobs are gotten by following contacts rather than by, you know, explicit job advertisements or recruiters. And the thing is, it's mostly not that your your best friend or your brother or sister gets you a job. It's someone you met in an event. It's a friend of a friend. It, it's weaker links in the social network that you follow. And that's what allows the matching of, of individuals with employment or contracting opportunities to happen. I mean, that's, that's, that's keeping the economy going, right? And the same sort of phenomenon in more complex forms sort of occurs, occurs all over the place. I mean, this specific example that, that led uh, Peter Simelli to the whole idea for the book was his work in, in molecular biology and seeing the power that, that weak links between chemicals and, and molecules have in stabilizing biological systems. So he worked, for example, with molecular chaperones, which are their special proteins that, that help out other, other protein dynamics and operations. So for example, chaperone molecules help with with the protein folding process, some chaperone molecules act sort of like washing machines that, that wash water through parts of a protein while it's folding. Now, water is a remarkable substance because of the weak bonds that it forms. I mean, weak, but real bonds, right? So, I mean, having some water in the protein when it folds makes the folding happen much better because it, it helps the protein not to get stuck in dead end conformations while it's going, it's going through the through the folding process. And what you find in the dynamics of protein folding is really strong bonds be between pieces of the strand of protein as it's folding don't play such a, a big role, but rather, you know, weaker connections using van der Waals force and, and, and so forth play a more major role. So you put some water in there that encourages weak links to, to form. And then as, as the protein kind of wiggles around different parts touch other parts they weakly bond with each other and then they may they may also break apart because the link was weak and the the conglomeration of all these weak links over time eventually causes the protein to find it, its its final conformation i mean i know we've been able to predict how a protein will fold reasonably accurately using deep learning now google deep minds did that which is is pretty exciting but still the the dynamics by which nature finds the confirmation uh, for, for, for a protein with it with its tertiary structure is quite subtle and involves all these network phenomena. And seeing these network phenomena related to chaperone molecules and protein folding and, and elsewhere, I mean, this is what led uh, the author of the book to think, well, maybe, maybe there's something more general here. Like maybe, maybe weak links play a major role in, in all sorts of different networks and you can you can see this in aging as well in, in a variety of different ways and I've I've spent a lot of time studying longevity biology and one thing you find is as bodies age the communication between the different parts of the body 
sort of breaks down and, and, and gets crappier and crappier, less and less and less efficient. And this has to do with the weak links between different subsystems of the body on, on different scales becoming weaker and weaker, basically, so, that, so they can't serve their regulatory co coordinating function. And as the coordination between different subsystems on different scales and different parts of the body, as its coordination breaks down, then you have more and more, more damage that, that accumulates, which is, is a large part of what's, uh, what's happening with, with aging and death. I mean, as one, one among many examples, there's a stiffening in the extracellular matrix that happens as you age. I mean, the extracellular matrix is the sort of the, the material in between the cells in your body. And you have, you have chemical signaling, you have mechanical signaling, you may even have biophotonic signaling through the extracellular matrix. But as glucosapine and other molecules in the, in the extracellular matrix stiffen as, as, as you get older, the communication between different parts of your body gets worse, worse and worse. So the, actually this, the example of the extracellular matrix is, is not mentioned in, 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 the, in this book that, that, that comes out of more recent work in, in aging biology. But what, what's discussed in the book is, is some other, other mechanisms by which as, 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 you, as you get older, the linkages between different body systems get, get weaker and weaker and the, the coordination function breaks breaks down basically you need you need those weak link you need those weak linkages to keep uh, keep the overall system functioning and you know in something like a singularity net network not so much as it is now where we have only a relatively small number of ai agents on the singularity net network and most of them are involved with sort of delivering services directly to to an end user but in a singularity net network, such as as we envision unfolding in, in, in the next few years, what we're gonna have is a bunch of different AI agents li living on, on, on the blockchain. So living on whatever computers they happen, they happen to be living on and running a singularity net smart contract that announces they're there to all the rest of the, of the decentralized network. So in this sort of decentralized network of AI agents and, and processes, where each AI agent may be outsourcing work to, to another AI agent in, in the network, or, 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 or it, may, it may be uh, you know, publishing information that a bunch of other AI agents in the network can, can, can utilize. And when an end user makes a query into the network, one agent may wind up responding proximally to their query, and that agent may outsource work on the back end to a whole bunch of other agents. So say, you know, in, in the Example I often give, if you have an agent that's summarizing a document for some end, end user, right, then that document summary agent, you know, it may encounter some information in an obscure language. It may consult another agent for, for translating from that obscure language into English or whatever the original language of the document is. Or, or the agent doing the document summary might have trouble understanding some reasoning in the document. It might outsource some work to, to a logical reasoning agent, right? And then let that logical re reasoning agent help it produce, produce the document summary. There may be a video embedded in the documents. So the document summary agent may outsource some work to a, to a video, video summary agent, right? So you have AI agents outsourcing work to other AI agents which outsource work to other AI agents and, and, and so forth. And what you have here is a graph or network where AI agents are, are linking to other AI agents. And the, the lesson of the, of the weak links theory here is that you know, the most important thing isn't just that say this document summary agent habitually outsources work to this machine translation agent or this, or this video summary agent or this, this reasoning agent. I mean, a really important thing is that you have a rich pool of AI agents out there and you can have weak connections between different AI agents so that you know, when one AI agent needs something done that maybe isn't exactly what it, what it needed done before, I mean, say the document summary agent, you know, it encounters a math formula and it almost never encounters a math formula or it, it encounters some, some weird uh, you know, historical fact, which is a bit dubious and it, it needs some agent to do history research, right? So connections that don't pop up all the time they still need to be there. These are weak links, weak links between agents. And what, what, this, what this theory generally suggests is that in a network like the singularity net of the future, where you have this rich pool of AI agents all outsourcing work to each other in complex patterns, 
in, in this singular unit of the future, the weak links between AI agents and the network are going to be extremely important for regulating the, the overall activity. And, you know, this is really important thinking about singular unit as a cohesive self-organizing system in that you know, part of the vision of singularity net is that by taking a network of AI agents all interoperating and, and outsourcing work to each other and, and combining with each other, we're, we're going to be able to get a system where the intelligence of the whole significantly exceeds the sum of the intelligences of the parts, right? And so in order, in order to do that, what this theory suggests is you know the weak weak linkages between the agents and the network are going to be are going to be extremely important and you know this is something to keep in mind when tuning singularity net that we we want to encourage there to be weak as well as as strong links right so you want you want to encourage an, an agent in singularity net network to be interacting with a whole bunch of different agents not 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 just a few and so th this has to do with how you design say the the incentive mechanisms for ai agents in the system you may want to incentivize each agent for for outsourcing work and interacting with it with a wide variety like a breadth of other of other agents in, instead of, instead of just just a few so that's that's an example of how the theory in this book can actually provide guidance for how you tweak the the parameters of a complex system you're engineering as well as for how you think about a complex natural system you're 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 studying like like an, an aging body and yeah the final example i want to talk about is social networks we talked about in the very beginning with the the job search example right but i i, I think uh you know it, it goes far beyond that and if you look at networks like say facebook uh Twitter, various online social networks. I mean, you have strong links and, and you have you have weaker links. And, you know, one point he makes is that the, the nature of current social networks is, is that we're being, we're being driven into social networks that are, that are clustering into sort of islands where you have strong links within a certain island and then weaker links between, between one, one, one island and, and the other. And it, it, it may be, and here I'm improvising a bit and extrapolating on, on, on the point on the points here because uh, I mean the, this uh, book weak links is let me see where, when was this book published? I, I read it quite some years ago. This is from 2006 and I read it shortly after it, it came out. Social networks were already a big thing in 2006, but of course the they hadn't conquered the world to the ex extent they have now and their various perversities and destructive aspects were not as well known then as, as, as they are now. So now, you know, now what we can see is that the clustering of social networks into sort of uh, modules where you have strong links inside this group of people, strong links between this group of people and, and much, much weaker linkages between this group and that group. We, we've seen that this, this can really lead to some uh, Perversions, and we have notions of uh, you know echo and and whatnot. What what the theory in in the weak links book suggests is that the key to having an effectively regulated social network it may, it may be you know to make those weak links a little less weak th th than they are now. Like you need to you need to encourage links that are not super strong like between your family members or your, or your best friends or people who agree with you on everything or people you work with but are but are still non-trivially strong so that you can you can follow them and if you have more of these moderately weak links in in this in the social network i mean then then you may get a dynamic where you know information can spread more effectively through all the different clusters in the social network than is happening now and where the you know the collective intelligence of the overall of the overall network is is greater, and I mean this can be studied in in a in a rigorous way, right? I mean you can you can one of the beautiful things about network science is you can you can analyze networks that are out there now, and 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 you can do simulation models of complex networks to really really probe the, these phenomena in, in in detail. And I think I think. Uh, you know the point about weak links 
which is the highlight of this book, is, is one really interesting point. And the, the broader point that the book illustrates is that we want to be taking a network science approach. We want to be looking at you know, connectivity among networks of elements and properties of the whole graph of, of, of connected elements. And you know, these properties of the graph of connected elements may have meaning across biological systems, AI systems, social systems, computational systems. And these network properties may be extremely important to look at in terms of how they affect the overall regulation of activities of the participants in the network. So yeah, this was a sort of herky-jerky run through a few of the many, many phenomena involving many complex networks and their weak links that, that, that are made in the book. And I've improvised a bit on the examples that, that, he, that he gave here, but I encourage you, uh, you know, give it a read and dig further into network science generally. The network way of thinking is, uh, it's incredibly important now and it's gonna get more and more and more important, you know, as, uh, as we approach a singularity and build more and more and more complex networks between, between us, the natural world, the computational world and, and, and our AI systems and so forth. Thanks.